Coming to you from the studios of STL TV in Forest Park, it's the best of the STL. On tonight's show, Executive Director of the World Bird Sanctuary, Walter Crawford. From MTV's Maid, aspiring singer Amber Camille with her coach, Abby C. Atmanyondo. Heating things up in the kitchen, Marco City Hall Cafe. Your entertainment for tonight, Rhoda G. And here are your hosts, Cassandra Walker and Ivy Hartman. Show. I'm Cassandra Walker. And I'm Ivy Hartman. What it's, a great audience. Yes, it's nice to be with you all. And it's it good is. to be together with you again, oh, Cassandra. Oh, thank you, Ivy. Oh, yes. I always miss you when I'm not here. And, and, and you are here. missed. Oh, yes. But we have a good time. I and did. I had a good time. Good. This heat is something else. Oh, isn't you got to get out of town wow. <laughs> <laughs> to, to escape cool. the heat. Yeah, yeah. That's funny. Don't go to the pool. You're just no. going to boil. The water's the evaporating in the pool. What are you talking about? Yeah. <laughs> You know, uh, th there's a lot of great ways to keep cool, though, in St. Louis. Mm -hmm. If you can't, you know, you can uh, find out about more of the resources here in St. Louis by continuing yes. to watch STL TV. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you're in need of some uh, extra air yeah. conditioning or just some help, yeah. just stay tuned to STL TV. We have all the hookups for you. Now, Ivy, I've got a question to ask you. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been made? <laughs> I feel like a maid sometimes. Oh, M-A-I-D. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gotcha, yeah. Me too. I'm in M-A-D-E. The reason why I asked because mm -hmm. there's a show called Made on MTV, and mm -hmm. we have two people that were on the show, and they're going to talk about what it means Ooh, to be made. I always love who we get to meet on the show and get yes. to bring on the show mm -hmm. and all the great things that we get to introduce you to because we love to keep you informed of what's going yes. on in St. Louis to experience it. And, you know, they post who's going to be on, you know, we have an upcoming show right, on Facebook. So, so you got to friend yeah. us to make sure you know. Absolutely. Follow us on Twitter. I hear you've been tweeting. I have, you know, actually I've been retweeting a lot of things. Right? Does that count? It does. I gotta get, I, I Wait, have not I, been. I need to get this. This is funny. What? My son Skylar, who sometimes uh, we tease him and say he's a, a tick short of a working clock. Oh. He said uh, that someone kept writing him. We said, what do you mean writing? He said, it's RT on my Twitter. I said, that would be retweet. Oh, right. <laughs> okay. See, Maybe I'm not he, so far behind. And so he was so proud that he might actually be right. That's yes, true. you're right. Oh, you're oh, right, good. Ivy. Yeah, Maybe you're his mom. See, he's <laughs> He needs a nice pat on the back, and Indeed. we love those pats on the back on Facebook, so go ahead and retweet Cassandra's tweets. <laughs> Check us out on Facebook. We're also on YouTube. Yep, on YouTube, you can see us no matter where you are. If you go on vacation, you can take us with you. I love it. And you know what? That is a lot of fun, because when I'm it on is. vacation, I don't look like this. And I'm like, really, see? <laughs> yeah. I do. I can look. <laughs> yeah. I like why re the replay back while I'm eating my cereal. Yeah. <laughs> it is fun, sometimes. It is. Well, you know what? I, we always have the best host with us, oh, and yeah. you know, we have the handsome and debonair mm. Tim with us today. He's in the audience, hey, too. Tim. That's right, handsome and debonair. Ladies, you look good, as always. And uh, this beautiful audience is looking good, too. Uh, folks, uh, can I get some clapping, something, you know? <laughs> you you should have seen rehearsal, folks. There was some singing, dancing. That's right, I said singing. Dancing, horn blowing, and of course, food. And if you would like to be a member of this studio audience, Please call us here at 314-552-2970. That's 314-552-2970. And call me crazy, but somebody in this audience smells like chicken. Can't tell, can't tell if it's fried or if it's baked, but it's, it's chicken. Uh, or perhaps it's just coming from the kitchen. I don't know. Let's toss it over to Cassandra. Is that what I'm smelling coming from the kitchen? 
Tim, you have a keen nose. You're absolutely right. I'm here with Pam Webb with Marco City Cafe, and they are making chicken today, aren't you, Pam? We are. Not just any kind, those are special wings, isn't that correct? Yes, that's right. We're making Marco's Tasty Tangy Wings. All right. Well, Pam, I can't wait to try those a little bit later in the show. But i got to ask you, why Marco City Cafe? Why that name? My son is Marco. I have one child. His name is Marco. I also have a grandson now who name is Marco. Oh, so really? Named it after my child. How does he feel about having a, a city cafe named after him? He loves it. He loves it. What he a good mom it. you are. Shoot, I have to think of something to do now, Pam. You, you got me there. Okay, I'll think about it. So, Pam, now, you have an interesting story on how you started out opening your restaurant business because some people may not know, but you actually came door to door to some of your clients. Tell us how. I used to deliver mail, but I was a guest audience and at the Oprah show, uh -huh. and they had us to fill out cards, and one of the questions was, the one thing you've always wanted to do but was afraid to do? Uh -huh. And my, my answer was to open a restaurant. And so when I st went back to work the next day, I passed a spot that used to be a restaurant, and it started from there. Wow, and so were you nervous at first as opening up your own restaurant, or did you just go gung-ho? Well, a little nervous, but I actually didn't know what it entailed, so uh -huh. I wasn't, I didn't know to be afraid. I understood. Until and I, your, I got in. And you brought your husband, Ron, I brought, along? I brought my husband All right. along with me. So tell me, what type of cuisine would you say Marco City Cafe serves? How would you sum it up? Uh, we do breakfast, lunch, mm -hmm. and like a light dinner. Okay, and what days are you open? Monday through Fridays from 7.30 to about 2.30. Okay, so on the weekends you're off then? Off. And where are you uh, located? City Hall, 1200 Mark Market, in the lower level. Okay, so let me ask you this, Pam. What do you think people would say you're most famous for? When they think of Marco City Cafe, they think, oh, I love their... Wings. Wings! That's why you brought them for us today. Yes. All right, now, it smells so good over here, just like Tim said. So hopefully I get a taste later. Now, do you have a special recipe? We do. All right, so it's unique. It's unique. Kind of like KFC. It's, it's a secret. It's somewhat of a somewhat secret. Somewhat of a secret. Okay, yes. now, I understand that a passion you have also is catering. Catering. All right, tell me about that a little bit. I love catering because it, it allows you to be creative. You're not stuck to one type of food. Uh -huh. And you get to create whatever the, the client wants. Okay, so I like that. It frees you up. So it doesn't matter what type of cuisine? If, if they matter. call you up and say they want shrimp kebabs or collard Japanese greens. food, really? soul food. So you're just a master chef. Master. That is say. impressive, <laughs> Pam. You. Oprah would be proud. You need to call her up and say, hey, Oprah, can I cater a couple of things for you? on the OWN Network. Are you up for that? I'm up for we it. We can do it today, together. Okay. okay. We'll together. All right, so t today, tell me what you're gonna be fixing. We have the tasty tangy wings, mm -hmm. and we're gonna do a summer salad. Oh, yummy. And then we have a nice little dessert, some sherbet with some raspberries, uh -huh. uh, fresh mint. Wonderful, we're gonna come back and see all of that and taste it as well, but first we're gonna to go to a break. So you stay with us because coming up, we have Walter Crawford with the Wild Bird Sanctuary. You're not gonna to wanna to miss it, stay with us. Wonderful, you see what kind of a job you did? You did fabulous. I held you like this When you throw away money on wasted electricity, you're throwing away everything you could have bought with it. Saving energy saves you money. Learn more at energysavers.gov. kitchen surfaces, utensils, and hands with soapy water. One in six Americans will get sick from food poisoning this year. Keep your family safer. Check your steps at foodsafety.gov.
Hey St. Louis, I'm Cara K. Keep it right here on STL TV. Shelters are the best places to find a new pet. You'll discover healthy and loving animals just waiting to become a part of your family. Find out more at the shelterpetproject.org. There's a monster in my bathtub. There's one on the couch. There's a monster on my bed. Keep innocent things from triggering an asthma attack. Please make the monsters go away. Learn how to stop their asthma attacks at noattacks.org. has had a lifelong passion for wildlife. He sure has. And they're and not kids, Ivy. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> they might, some might say we're pretty wild, but <laughs> this guest has actually dedicated his life to the preservation of birds, especially birds of prey. Mm -hmm. 35 years ago, he founded the World Bird Sanctuary, combining wildlife research, education, rescue, and rehabilitation, mm -hmm. all into one amazing facility. Ivy, help us welcome, please, Mr. Walter Crawford. Hey, Walt. So Walt never comes empty-handed. No, never. And I you already know the name. Yes, so we have a screeching owl named Timber uh -huh. and a peregrine falcon, na falcon named Millennium. Right. And we're going to get to know them a little bit more a little, a little bit later on, All if that's right. okay with that's you. Well, right. if the birds can't sit, we'll have you all walk them over that way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you, ladies. Yeah, fun. Beautiful. Walter, that is so exciting. Well, every, thanks for having us today. You're oh, welcome. Yeah. Every time you come, I'm just fascinated. <laughs> I am too. I'm so fascinated. What made you decide to start 35 years ago? You just said, you know what, I'm going to start a wild bird sanctuary. There had to be some thought into it, I'm sure. Well, actually, I spent my early childhood in Venezuela. My father okay. was an engineer. Came back to the United States, uh, worked for the zoo for a while, met Marlon Perkins. Oh. And he's the one that like, kind of said, you got to go out in life and, and do what you believe in, protect wildlife. I had no idea it would turn into what it did now but uh, so speaking you know. of turning it into what it did now I mean the World Bird Sanctuary has a name here locally in the mm -hmm. St. Louis area and probably throughout the state of Missouri but also people you have some national recognition you appear at baseball games oh, and yeah. um, quite a we've following. done the Rose yeah. Parade we've done a little bit of everything and and of course you know we, we work in Guyana Grenada Ecuador Mexico wow. trying to help those countries uh, their teachers teach the children about yes. their ecosystems and the importance of saving them. That is so fantastic. Yeah. Now, were you inspired by any other wildlife experts when you were younger or coming up, or even as an adult? I think Marlon had the most Im impact on me, and he told me uh, uh, after we started, he said, you know, talk to the children. Hmm. He said, they're our future. And yes. so we, we did almost close to a 1,000 programs last year to about 265,000 children, so. Wow, isn't that, that amazing? Is yeah, I know, yeah. I know. That's absolutely tremendous. Yeah. That's a lot, that's a big impact, that's good, because that's conservation is a really important key, and, and knowing um, the wildlife we have here in St. Louis and learning how to respect it and help support it, which is kind of cool too, because yeah. talk about what you're doing at the Air Force Base um, with the Falcons. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, Millennium, the peregrine you just saw, is yeah. retired Air Force. Uh, we work with the Air Force to control the birds on the runways. Because we all heard about the landing of the, of the plane mm -hmm. in the Potomac, you know, with the people. Fortunately, everybody lived. Right. But birds are a big problem with planes, especially Air Force planes. And we've been able to train these birds to keep the other birds off the runway. Nothing gets killed. Nobody gets hurt. And uh, the birds, they're all scared of the peregrines because they can dive at 286 miles an hour. I am Whoa. glad that he brought that up yeah. because there wow. is no other animal in the world that's faster than oh, that. Oh, not even close. And wow. yeah. even as humans... The Air Force hasn't even reached that point yet, have right. they? Well, this so way they don't have to use. Well, they they have they have missiles and stuff. Oh, that's so, true. You're right. But uh, you know, right. the the, the bottom right. line was that I said we can do this without guns, without shooting something, without mm -hmm. injuring the environment. And it's worked out very well. 
Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. what a yes. cool thing. Now, yes. have you ever been bitten by any of your birds or, or caught off guard by any? Ivy and I were saying, wouldn't it be something if all of a sudden they just started flying around us? What would we do? And I see some beautiful oh, birds on I the screen. I think most of you would probably leave the stage here real quick. But, uh, <laughs> no, yeah, it, it's inevitable when you work with uh, these birds. It's not on purpose sometimes, but you have to look at birds like you look at people. And certain times they have days you don't mess with them, you know. Mm. And, and that's the way it is, and you have to learn a little bit about their behavior. Yes, I would so imagine speaking so. speaking of behavior, I mean, we're seeing some great photos, but I'm seeing more and more bird of prey getting pretty, uh, not aggressive, but just a little bit less wary of humans. Be hmm. Is it because they're able to find water? They've urbanized themselves. Uh, ah. We have a lot of food in, this, in the urban areas now with yes. squirrels and mice and rats and rabbits and uh, that type of stuff. Uh, and they've learned to cohabitate with us as long as we let them alone. Mm -hmm. They won't bother you if you don't bother them. Absolutely. You know, and it's sort of like me. You let me alone, I won't bother <laughs> you. You know, but I mean, that's true. I mean, as long as you don't bother wildlife, it'll get on next to us and we can live with it in harmony and it's going to be great. In St. Louis, in Missouri, mm -hmm. I don't know about you, Cassandra, oh, right you live in, the in city. Washington. There right are in the so city. many yeah. places to, so you can see all kinds of birds. And I, and I grew up in California, and I didn't see them as prevalent. And what I wish I could do, maybe you have some recommendations, because as a, I'm not an avid bird watcher, but I like to look at them, and I'd like to know what kind of bird I'm looking at. And I keep thinking, man, I wish there was an app for my phone where I could take a picture <laughs> and it would tell me. How do, um, how can I educate myself, or how can, what's, what do you recommend people do to be able to identify different Ironically, types? Ironically, bird watching is the number one hobby in the United States. Number one? There's wow. nothing you can Who do that's that? cheap. You buy a book, a pair of binoculars, and you got it made. Uh -huh. Now, there are videos you can buy, and there's a lot of educational things, mm -hmm. but it's become a, a massive, massive hobby. All you need, if you want to feed them, put a feeder out, but mm -hmm. one thing right now, especially birds need more than anything, is water. Mm. Yes. Even if you take your trash can lid, turn it over and fill it with water, mm -hmm. they'll calm down. You'll get I everything imaginable. Wow. Yes. But remember to dump it every two days so that you don't get mosquitoes, mosquitoes. breeding sure, in sure. there. But, but I mean, water and bird seed, and you will have a, a virtual, unbelievable <laughs> habitat full of birds. Well, now, what do you think is something that most people don't know about birds, especially wild birds? Because, for instance, we have geese that come and they say if yeah. you feed them, if they nest, they're going to keep coming back. What do you think is something that people don't know? Well, there's certain times, like with the geese, people don't realize they can, they can migrate, they can fly. Mm -hmm. People don't believe that. Oh, if I don't feed them, they're going to die. Oh, no. They're migratory. They sure. always were, but they, they're like, like me. If you give me, put me food here and get something to drink, I'm not going to go anywhere. Yeah. <laughs> and they're the same way. You know, why uh -huh. should I leave? I You're got right. everything I need. And they get aggressive. Yes. I mean, if yeah. you try and bother the babies or you try and bother the nest, you're going to get nailed. I wow. keep thinking, well, that's how we get Walt to keep coming back. We feed him and, and have him on the show. But uh, we're looking at Timber now, who's a screech owl. Yes. And you were talking about uh, in the Webster Groves area, um, people putting up boxes possibly to well, help yeah, them nest. Part of nest. the problem was that big ice storm. They, they, everybody panicked over the trees, mm -hmm. so they cut down all the dead trees. Well, the dead trees are where the woodpeckers make the holes that these guys nest in. Oh. And they eat, you know, mice and, and insects. And watch, don't put out any virulent poisons. That's a big problem. Oh. You know, some of these poisons are secondary. Make sure you check on that. Mm. Okay. And you put up a box, a nest box, and build it. The old saying, build it and they will come. Mm -hmm. yeah. They will. Oh, cool. Wow. You know, yeah, we have, we're on a nest box habit right now, trying to get as many. We have about <laughs> 500 we've put up so far. Goodness. How yeah. long does it take to put that many up? Four years. Whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Four and, years. and I don't climb trees anymore, so well, I got the younger guys to do it, you know. <laughs> well, what would you tell a young person? Ivy's two little boys are here in the audience. What would you tell some young people who are interested in doing what you're doing? Volunteer. I mean, we have an intern program. Both the young ladies you saw here are college students who are hoping for careers in this field. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually have five more interns out at the sanctuary right now. Uh, little, you, you go and become a volunteer. You know, volunteers, we were talking to earlier, the gentleman, I said the, the rarest thing in the world right now is volunteers. Wow. People are losing the desire to help not only birds, but everything. They mm -hmm. got to get more involved. And the World Bird Sanctuary is so much more than birds, and you guys have some great events coming up. Yeah. So you've got a yeah. Thursday evening music. Yeah, we have, uh, third, we have our own band. Okay. And uh, they've written and produced uh, two CDs. Oh, wow. And it's a very interesting group of people that work there. And it's free to the public. We have 305 acres. We have nature trails. We have exhibits. We have wow. everything you can imagine. It yeah. doesn't cost you a cent. I love Excellent. that. You know, bring the family. And Sundays you have also events going on as well. Yes, Yay. a lot of events. Go to our website, you know, worldbirdsanctuary.org. It has everything on it, and it'll give you a lot of information about us. And, and, and we're just asking other people to, to get involved and 
not necessarily just birds, but help nature in general. Perfect. Thanks, so Thanks Walt. Thank you, ladies, very much. Oh, yeah, Thank a lot you. of fun. They're so located much. in Valley Park, really easy to get to. And as Walt said, everything's free. We actually gave away three of the CDs awesome. to uh, three of our audience members before the show started tonight. See, you got to come to the audience. Oh, Wonderful yeah. time. We love having yeah. you, Walter. Thank you so much. And now we're going to go to Tim, who's in the audience, and he's having a great time oh, over there. Yeah. Tim? That's right. Oh, my bird. Oh, my bird. That was a great interview. Don't know what that means. I've been around teenagers way too long. Anyway, I am joined by Diamond, newly married from St. Louis, Missouri. She's our trivia person, and I am going to ask her a trivia question. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. My question is, what is the Missouri state bird? The blue bird. You got it. You got it. You get a car. <laughs> I'm kidding. This ain't Oprah, but you do get a Sam's Club, $35 Sam's Club. So spend it how you like, and we are going to toss it back to the kitchen where Cassandra is there looking like an African queen. Thank you so much, Tim. I love that. I have to pay you later on for that compliment. Now, I'm back over here again with Pam Webb from Marco City Hall Cafe, and we're going to have some delicious food in just a little bit. So why don't you tell me, Pam, what's cooking in that pot over there? We're making the tasty tangy sauce. And mm. Cup of ketchup, uh -huh. fourth a cup of brown sugar, and a fourth a cup of hot sauce. And you oh. mix it up together and just let it simmer. And you're giving away a little bit of your uh, secret. You know that, we, Pam? We are. But uh, you, the, the key is the love. Oh, okay. Love. So All right. That, so you have to have special, your special love. The special now, love. Now, speaking of that special love, Pam, I have to say that our crew loves you because you bring them donuts to the Board of Auto Meetings and help out. And they want to say a big thank you. Let me give you a hug from the crew. <laughs> thank you, Pam. Thank you so much for that. It's much appreciated. Now, Pam, so he's making a special sauce, obviously, for the wings. And then I'm assuming he's going to put those put, put them in. in and and then them. Okay. And while he's doing that, let's talk about the salad here. It yeah. looks delicious. Why, let me ask you this. Why do you mix fruit in with vegetables? What does that give it or what? It balanced the taste. Uh -huh. And a lot Wonderful. of younger people, like I think, like it to bite, bite down and have something sweet. Yes. So it's good and it's healthy. Great idea. Yes, it is. Well. So tell me what you have here. What's it called? We have, this is a summer spring salad. Mm -hmm. We have spring mix, cucumbers, grape tomatoes, red onions if you like, uh, golden raisins, blue cheese, and if you want raspberry or kiwi, Ooh, yes. you could do it. And yes. whatever your favorite dress, salad dressing. So you have different types of salad dressings. Yes. It works. sounds so refreshing. Like it's just going to make you just jump around with all that energy because it's so healthy for healthy. you. So what do, is, what do you think is the most requested entree that you have? Probably macaroni and cheese. Really? Or it must be another special. Is it baked? It's baked macaroni oh, and cheese made like from Pamela. scratch. Oh, Pam. And you didn't yeah. bring me any? Didn't bring any mm, today. Mm, mm. We was going light because of the heat. Mm. Okay, okay, okay. we wanted okay. to do something right. really nice and light. So today. you think about me. Make sure Thinking I don't get about, too hot. Yes. Oh, okay, there yes. you go, Pam. You got my back. So do you have a signature item that you would say, this is my signature? People know Pam Webb for this item. The tangy wings. And that, okay. that's actually because my taster was my son, Marco. Okay. <laughs> and that's his favorite meal, the tangy wings. He actually gave it the name. We were making hot wings, and one day he said, they're not high, hot, they're tangy. And so that's how we came up with the name tangy. I like and it. that's his favorite. So what's your favorite? Wing. Probably the herb roasted chicken. Okay, and so tell me about the herb roasted chicken. Are these special herbs that you put in there? It's special herbs. Okay. It's like five different herbs that mm. I put in it and bake it in the oven uh -huh. and bring it out. The aroma and everything is really nice. Oh, Pam. That's, that's my nice. favorite. Oh, I love it. So let me, let's just, just just imagine for a little bit. Uh, let's say I'm having a little party for Ivy okay. and it's in the fall and I want to cater. Can you give me like the top three or four items I should have in that fall meal? In the fall meal, if it's like a finger fruit, it depends if a finger food, if you want finger food. Okay, let's do finger fun. food. I would probably do, suggest like a chicken sap uh, salad, uh -huh. and maybe spinach with artichoke dip mm -hmm. or hummus. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe some meatballs, okay. sweet and sour meatballs. Love it. A salad mm -hmm. and a light dessert. Pam, that is why you are so good at what you do. Oh, it sounds delicious. We're going to come back later on, and we're going to get to okay. taste the food, which I can't wait to do, All right. and talk a little bit more about you. Okay, so again, Marco City Hall Cafe, you have the information right there on your screen. But while I'm waiting here to taste the food, we're going to toss it over to Ivy, who's in the den. Ivy? 
All of that sounds wonderful. You know, just as tasty to eat. We want to ha get, provide you with something that's a real treat for the eyes. And joining me now is Mary Collins of Vage Boutique and Jewelry Designs, as well as Joni Ross of J. Marie Designs. All right, you two have paired up and you've opened a place in, uh, well, you've opened a place in Union Station. And so you're, you've got your jewelry displayed. And then, Joni, you've got some of your designs on display. How did this meeting come about so that you guys could do this venture with one another? You can tell the story. Yeah, you can tell the story, right? Joni, you wanted to tell the story, will it be the truth? <laughs> yeah. We met on Facebook. Yeah. I um, added her as a friend and uh, she's- And I kind of wanted to be, or kind of stalk her page and see, who's this lady that just yeah. added me? Because her name was kind of different. So I like started looking through her pictures and stuff like that. And then I'm like, oh my gosh, like her jewelry is amazing. So I inboxed her to invite, invite her to come to my fashion show to like have her jewelry on my models and set up a booth and it's been history. Yeah, although according to Mary, she says, yeah, there's some history there. She wasn't sure it was love at first sight or not, but I think it was because if we check out some of your designs, a lot of it is love at first sight and you really get your inspiration from the materials. Um, some of the materials and the colors that she comes up with, I kind of try to match my jewelry since we always work together. We collab with each other all the time. We don't like use anybody else. so. You oh never, God. they buy my jewelry, they can buy her clothes, so they buy her clothes to match my jewelry. And you can get a peek at some of these one of a kind designs by visiting them in Union Station, but also we have a few photographs of some of them, you know, and it's really very unique. You also will do some commission pieces. So let's say I have a design, obviously, that she has, that Joni's designed. You're going to pick up those colors and do it, but also talk about some of the materials that we see using here. Um, the materials there are basically just safety pins and chain and rhinestones and some lucite hearts that I kind of just put together and just kind of saw where it went. And I, I love this one because it's asymmetrical, kind of like the one you're wearing. Yeah, that's the exact one I'm wearing. Um, that's just kind of like a metal bib and then I just kind of threw some deliciousness on there. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> this one is, uh, I actually kind of hand sewed some of that and sewed it on the machine and then I just kind of added the drape to it. So speaking of sewing, Joni, you're no stranger to sewing and that's kind of how you started your foray because actually you have a background in business. I do. Oh, talk about starting this uh, J. Marie Designs. Well, my degree is in business management, um, but ever since high school, I, I started sewing. My mother taught me how to sew. Um, I did my prom dresses junior and senior year in high school. So of that course was, you did. Yes. Good. <laughs> so that was fun. So, um, I mean, I went to school. I went to SIUE. So I, I really didn't do much with sewing there except for like sorority step show uniforms and things like that. Um, but then in 2010, I'm like, my this is like really where my heart is. So I'm like, well, maybe, you know, I can get started doing this and uh, kind of just stepped out and started doing it, you know, part time and different dresses here and there. And then... Um, Last year, um, I was working full time and I kind of just wanted to step out in faith and see what where the business would take me. So I just kind of said, here we go, Jay Marie, let's go in. And Jay Marie it is. And we're seeing it on the runway there because that was at your fa fashion show at the end of March. What are you I know and we debut all those great summer fashions and, and spring fashions and you're really exhibiting something awesome now. But what do we have to look forward to for fall and winter? For fall and winter. Um, me and Mary are going to collab again, and we've definitely got some nice winter pieces coming up. I do want to do more um, with wedding gowns. I did some in the spring show. I'm going to do a lot more in the fall show. And then um, we've got a lot of different things in store. Fun stuff, though. And I love it because it's all one of a kind. So I can just go in and say, I, just do, do me over. Mm -hmm. May, yeah? Okay, good. I love your vision because it is. It's really, really very flattering for both in the complimentary things with the jewelry, one of a kind. Really nice to have you both here. Oh, yeah, yeah. We always like to bring you something new and fun. Great treats. They are Vage in St. Louis's Union Station. They have brought a bright glimmer of hope to the Union Station. Everybody loves them down there. You can find them on Facebook, but you can call them at 241 58 96. And you guys are there from 10 to 9, right? Um, Monday through Saturday, and then Sunday, 10 to 6. Hey, are you always there, Mary? I try to be. Yeah. <laughs> All right, good. I knew I knew where to find you. And you know what? We like to bring you the best. And speaking of that, because don't go anywhere, because our next two guests have actually appeared on MTV's Made. I know you won't want to miss that. Stick around. <laughs> You've been made. <laughs> I wouldn't be.
traditional light bulbs actually generate nine times more heat than light. Let's switch to Energy Star light bulbs and stop burning through cash. Saving energy saves you money. Packers. Viking. Red State. Blue State. We come from different places. Uptown. But Down. when we live united, we create real lasting change in the education, income, and health of our live country. United. Real change won't happen without you. <laughs> so give, advocate, volunteer, live united. Sign up at liveunited.org. When tragedy struck Indonesia and Haiti, the world responded. The famine, war, and drought affecting the Horn of Africa right now is larger than both these crises combined, and the world should be paying attention. Text a donation of $10, but do more than donate. Forward the facts to everyone you know. Forward from our site, forward on Facebook, and forward on Twitter. We are the relief. This what you had in mind? Every choice we make has a consequence. Help EarthShare and its members restore balance to the world. Visit EarthShare.org and see what you can do. EarthShare, one environment, one simple way to care for it. And welcome back to the best of the STL. Well, we heard her play a couple of times throughout the show. And let me tell you, she has a different flavor. I like her style, and I hope you will too. So let's give it up for Rhoda G.
Got your breath, got your breath. <laughs> All I can say is that was bad. Made me feel like I was up in the club up in here. <laughs> You know what, let's begin by introducing yourself to the audience. Um, who is Rhoda G? Me. Yeah. So how would, you describe, <laughs> how would you describe your style? That's what I mean. Uh, the new sax. Okay. Yeah, I, I don't play a lot of old stuff. I stick to, you know, my, my age and younger. Okay. But I, I, I throw it back sometimes. Now, what were you, pl what were you playing here? This is soprano sax. I was playing uh, Beyonce's Love on Top. Okay, you also play the alto, I see, too. Yes, alto as well. How much of you, how much of you do you blow out of that horn? All of me. You know what I'm saying? No. I'm <laughs> saying, I'm saying a lot of times musicians give their heart and their soul that's, and what they do. Yeah, that's all I give because I'm self-taught. I don't, I, I don't, I, I can't read. I haven't had any lessons, so. Really? It's all me. And where did that come from? God. Okay. <laughs> no musical training at all? No, sir. Tell me, who would you uh, like to work with? Ah, because let me, let me tell you, I was researching you a little bit last night. Uh -huh. And I'm doing YouTube, and I'm looking for some of your performances. Let me tell you, I see this girl with her glasses on, hair pulled back like you are today, a sweater vest, killing a Little Wayne song. Lollipop. I'm dying. I'm dying. Lollipop. I'm dying. <laughs> And, 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 and so obviously you you're a big fan of hip hop, and that's why I asked uh, some, who are the, some of the audience, audience uh, some of the guys that you'd like to work with. Um, Usher, mm -hmm. definitely. Uh, John Legend, okay. um, Jill Scott, Flo, uh, Marsha Ambrosius, anybody out there doing it right now. Well, thank you so much for that great performance, oh, and we look you. forward to some other things. How can we get in contact with you? Uh, go to www.rotagmusic.com. Great, fantastic. Let's toss it back to Ivan Cassandra on the main stage. Great job, yeah. Tim. Great job. That was wonderful. Really impressive. Our next guest, Ivy, recently appeared on MTV's Made. And as the president and founder of Abbasi PR, she was given the opportunity to help coach an aspiring singer. I love it. Mm -hmm. Please help us welcome Made coach Abbasi Magnando. <laughs> I see that. Oh, right. I blue. You look beautiful. Thank How are you today? I'm good. Good. Well, welcome to the show. Now, you recently, we just said you coached a woman on a show called Made, but some people may think she doesn't look like an athletic coach to me. Can you explain to us what it means when we say you coached her? Yes. MTV contacted me about um, this awesome singer that they really believed in that um, they felt had the potential to be a national recording artist. and. You know, they knew about my company, obviously PR, obviously, and they were like, um, um, we want you to um, coach this girl, and she's there in St. Louis and everything, so help us put this together. Awesome. For many of us who may not ha be watching MTV, we may not have that channel, what is MTV Made? MTV Made is an Emmy award-winning show. Um, it's been on for 12 years. This season um, was different. It's called Dream Bigger, so oh. they had... Um, they have young adults and people really trying to make it in the real world. It used to be a lot of like, you know, I want to be a cheerleader, yeah, I, want, yeah. mm -hmm. I want to be um, on prom court, and now it's about real people out there just pursuing their dreams, um, you know, and it's not just teenagers so anymore. Professionally. Profe mm -hmm. okay. Professionally. And really taking it to the next level. Absolutely. And I got to be honest with you, you've worked with her, she is amazing. She Absolutely. And we have the distinct pleasure of presenting a performance by Amber Camille to you now.
never ever try to defeat me no never i'm getting stronger so you Beautiful job. Welcome. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Thank you for having me. You're so welcome. Your voice just comes. You didn't even need the mic, did she? No, it was it's it was so a, strong. Yes, it was beautiful. I kept telling Cassandra, I said, I can't believe that big sound is coming out that of little that person. package. I know. That is so great. Only Wonderful. God. I don't and know as we came from, from as we're watching you perform, I'm just thinking how blessed we are to have you here yes. in our studios doing that. I mean, you guys, yes. you and your dancers were You're really fantastic. Thank you. All, the dancers on point. Yes, we did. Yes. yes. Everyone was working together. That is such a beautiful scene to see. Amber, I have to ask you, what was the most difficult part about being on MTV's Made? For, not to mention that millions of people are watching. You're trying to do something. Yes. What was the most difficult? Oh my God, I mean, just, I mean, I have this great opportunity to show America what I have. I've been working at this since I was three. So wow. it's just like the most difficult part was just like trying to break down this wall they kept saying I had and just, taking everybody's criticism and trying to show them that I really am listening and mm -hmm. trying to do whatever it is that they're asking. So mm -hmm. it was just so many people telling me what to do and I just had to do it because it was do or die. I had no Very other mature. option. Very mature. Yeah. yeah, now did you guys have any moments of controversy or <laughs> hard times as you were pulling it together? Because all we're seeing is this awesome finished package. Right. Yeah. Right. Oh, yeah, we had some moments. Oh yeah? <laughs> yeah, we did. We had a lot of moments. For those of us who haven't seen it, though, you seem like you are very proud of the performance you saw Absolutely. today, though, obviously. It, Amber is so awesome, and I keep saying she's like the next top star, because she really, really is. She's a full package. She, she can is. sing, she can dance, you know, she has great looks, a great personality, mm -hmm. and then just the whole, you know, package. She has, we have the best dancers. Yes. yes. Des yeah, and, and Maya, 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 Maya,
makes a lot and the best makeup artist too. Yes, and Anna, absolutely. But not having a singing background, she must have already had some raw talent for sure. you to work with and bring her to this level. Is that right? She did. She she was already blessed with a, um, a gift from God, I think. And then we had shopped her demo to some executives in New York and then they gave us feedback of what she needed to do and that's when I came into the picture. I and. See. You know, basically, like told her these were the executive's criticism. This is what you need to work on, and she took it really well. And she did everything that was, you know, required of her. So wow, shucks. Obviously, I was hoping you could take someone with a broke voice like mine and turn them into a superstar. But I guess you have to have some I, talent. I, well, you've got talent. We just, <laughs> I think singing. obviously, you see some. No, it's not going to be singing. <laughs> so what you you mean to? I'm not going to be a great dancer, so that we leveled the playing field you there. Model, yes, oh, you okay. Could. Well, See? Thank Beautiful. you. I'm past my. Did you, were you able to maintain the, There were changes that needed to be made. Yes. Oh but God. how do you, I mean, did you maintain any, when your friends and family in St. Mm -hmm. Louis see you changing, did you maintain yourself through oh, all yes, this? Or I, how I always did you change? try to stay humble as possible. Um, mm -hmm. Anybody, like my position right now is not guaranteed to me. The next day is not guaranteed. So I always try to stay humble, stay professional as possible. I never mm -hmm. like take it for granted ever. That's mm -hmm. wonderful. So what do you yeah. think the biggest lesson you learned? If you were to say, you know what, this really was important to me. I learned this during mm -hmm. the process. What would that be? The main thing is just to be more sociable. Like, cause mm -hmm. a lot of times people might think you look mean, mm -hmm. but it's more of just you thinking more sure. than just being yourself. So I just, when I meet people now, I just try to be myself automatically so they won't think anything else of me. Good That's point. really yeah. cool. I like well, that. Amber's performance really shown, and, and you can tell that she makes it look easy, mm -hmm. but I know there's a lot of hard work that goes into what you do and <laughs> what she does. So really give us some reality in terms of this, because MTV may, may have done, given us a little dose of reality, but mm -hmm. talk about the real reality behind being a PR agent yes. and then also working with a talent being like Amber. Streets. Uh, yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's a yes. lot of hard work and you know, and you guys know some of my clients have had them on here before. So a lot of times you see like the finished pro you know, product mm -hmm. and it looks glossy and it's you know, they don't see everything that's behind the scenes and all the hard work and the ups and downs and mm -hmm. Oh really you're not just living it up having champagne <laughs> and going on <laughs> boat rides and free. you know, with all these great <laughs> celebrities and you know, schmoozing with New York execs. <laughs> right? That's what it's all about. Right. right? <laughs> I wish it was always, you know, but it's so far from it. Everything in life, you have to really work hard. Mm -hmm. It's not, nothing's going to be handed to you. Nothing's just, you know, there for you on a magic carpet ride. Whatever you want to do, I do believe you can do it. And I believe anybody can be successful if they yes. apply themselves. But you have to have the work ethic. You do. And, and you know, you have to have the team, too. Mm -hmm. I was watching a movie um, about Celine Dion, and she started singing when she was a little girl. And her manager, who later became her husband, you know, he really worked hard for her, mm -hmm. pushing her and helping her. And obviously, you have to do. You have to have a passion for that because mm -hmm. you have to talk about somebody else mm -hmm. and push them. Is, is that hard to do? <laughs> um, it's easy for Amber, but you know, no. some people that are always doing the wrong things, and you ah. have to be the publicist. It's like you know, like oh God, here we go again. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. You know, but um, you know, it's, it's something that's in me and something that I've worked you know really hard for, and I yes. have great people in my life that are very supportive and mm -hmm. that motivate me and all of that. So I'm thankful for that. I have a good team. Yes, indeed. Yeah. And easy for Amber. You're right. You, 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 yeah. you can see the talent. You can see you definitely have a genuine personality. I, I, you performed here for us. Mm -hmm. Really excited me. So I want to know how we can get more of Amber Camille. Where are you performing next? Do we have an album? What's next? I mean, well, really? We're in the process of doing more TV right now. We really can't talk a lot about it because we don't know the details, but yeah, doing more TV. I'm getting in the studio, getting this project going, okay. trying to shop some demos to different labels, just trying to get signed and show everybody that I'm still going because nothing's going to stop me. Like. This is what I do. This yeah. is what She's I'm going to do. She's getting stronger, as she right. wrote in her song. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. No, it's not. Nothing's going to stop you. Exactly. That's good. Ahead. You are fantastic. Yes, Thank you, you are. What a great team. Yeah, very good. I love it. Thank I you. I just enjoyed myself. I've had a really good time. If you want to get a hold of Amasi, you can check her out at amasipr.com, mm -hmm. or the number is on your screen as well. Absolutely. Thank you so much, ladies, for coming Thank on. You. I, I hope you'll come back. I'm inspired. I am, too. <laughs> I am so inspired. So Tim yes. has been a great teammate of ours the whole been show. Awesome. And I think he's actually meeting with somebody that might inspire us as well. Absolutely. Hey, I need some help as far as uh, PR goes. So obviously I'll be talking to you uh, after the show. Uh, <laughs> 
But you know what? On a serious note, we have uh, something very serious to talk about. Uh, I'm joined here with uh, Ken uh, Bitledge, Bitledge yes. from the American Cancer Society. He's going to talk about a fundraiser called Uncork for Hope. And it's a, uh, this is the first annual for this uh, event, right? That is correct. This is the uh, first, uh, this is a brand new event for the American, <coughs> pardon me, for the American Cancer Society here in uh, St. Louis. And uh, what Uncorked for Hope is, is that it's a wine tasting and uh, silent auction that is going to take place on Saturday, August 18th at the Randall Gallery in downtown St. Louis. Now, tell me how you came to work with this particular well, I've been uh, volunteering with the American Cancer Society uh, for two years now, and uh, how this event came around to uh, coming about is that a lot of the uh, volunteers from last year's um, Urban Cowboy Cattle Barons Ball decided to uh, start a brand new event called Uncork for Hope, and uh, so we're doing it uh, this year to uh, raise funds for the American Cancer Society. You've been touched uh, personally by cancer in your family, and I understand you're very passionate about this because of that as well. Uh, that is correct. Uh, my grandmother died uh, from cancer when I was a young child, and so I did not get to grow up with uh, this uh, wonderful woman that I kept uh, hearing about my entire life. And uh, plus, I currently have a cousin who is uh, battling cancer right now. And so this money that is raised from this fundraiser goes back into research for cancer? Uh, that it does, and uh, the research that we will be raising uh, funds for is actually uh, done here in the uh, St. Louis area. And uh, in addition to uh, us raising money for research, we're going to be raising money for uh, Camp Sunrise, which is a uh, camp for uh, children who are uh, battling cancer, and also the uh, Hope Lodge, which is a place where people who are uh, bad, being treated for uh, cancer can uh, stay at for free, because if they did not have the Hope Lodge, it would be very expensive to uh, stay here in uh, St. Louis. It's for people who are um, battling from out of town who are battling cancer. Great, great. Now let me know how we can get more information about this and how can people call and uh, get tickets for this event. Uh, well, you need to uh, go to the website. It's www.uncorkedforhope.org. Uh, and uh, you can also see what, uh, how the funds will be used at uh, www.cancer.org, which is the national site for the American Cancer Society. Thank you so much, Ken. Again, the event is Saturday, August 18th at the Randall Gallery. Let's toss it back to the kitchen, and uh, a lot of folks are there now, so please save me some food. Uh, we're catering a little party over here. Yes, we will try to say you have a plate right here, Tim, mm. but, you know, it's inching close to me. Oh, thank you so much. Again, Marco's City Hall Cafe, delicious food, and your hours and days again? Monday through Friday, 7.30 to 2.30, and we have catering. Whenever it's needed. Oh, Whenever you right. need it. So you just call them at 588-8884. And you know what? I'm, I'm actually loving it. Cassandra, you mentioned throwing me a party. I'm all about this yeah, food. Yeah, I know. Very good. I know. And, you know, I was trying to get Tim's plate, but doggone it, he made over here too quickly. Thank you so much for coming <laughs> on, does. Pam. Beautiful. Check her out. Awesome. You would not be disappointed. Ivy, I'm so happy we had a great show today. I oh, want to thank yeah. our guest, Pam. Thank you so much for coming on. Her silent partner, Ron. <laughs> thank you for coming on the show and make sure you patronize their establishment. As well as our guests, Abbasi and Amber coming on the show. And of course, Walter. Oh, we yeah. love having Walter Crawford on. A lot of fun. You know what? You guys were a great studio audience. Thanks for mm. tuning in at home and on the web. And I want to thank our sponsors. We really appreciate all you do for us. Mm -hmm. And uh, by the way, let's give it up again for Rhoda. Ooh, G. Rhoda. All right. Awesome. And all of our guests.